Prime Minister Datu Sri Anwar Ibrahim today attended the 42nd ASEAN Summit 2023 opening and plenary session to discuss a number of issues of common interest to the regional grouping. A total of eight heads of government from 10 ASEAN member states participated in the summit except for Myanmar, which was not invited, and Thailand, which faces elections on 14 May. Also present were ASEAN Secretary General Dr. Kao Kim Horn and Timor Leste Prime Minister Tao Matan Ruak. The leaders begin their two-day meeting to discuss several important issues to encourage a stronger region in strengthening its economic resilience and facing current challenges. This is in line with the theme of Indonesia's Regional Block Chairmanship 2023, Hashtag ASEAN Matters, Happy Center of Growth. Datu Sri Anwar has emphasized on five agendas during his bilateral meeting with Indonesian President Joko Widodo yesterday that included aspects of official visits, yearly discussions and border talks. Now, the Prime Minister also reiterated an invitation to the Indonesian leader, Jokowi, to officially visit Malaysia in June. Jokowi's visit would be to reciprocate Anwar's official visit to Indonesia earlier this year. During the 30 minutes meeting in West Mangarai, Datu Sri Anwar also stated Malaysia's preparedness to support the initiative to organize the 17th Joint Commission Bilateral Cooperation and 14th Annual Consultation, which will be hosted by Indonesia to boost bilateral relationships. Malaysia are in the process of finalizing domestic procedures to enable the border crossing agreement and border trade agreement to be signed during Jokowi's visit to Malaysia or during the 14th annual consultation. Touching on the topic of maritime and land borders, Datu Sri Anwar said, Malaysia is ready for the Maritime Border Delimitation Treaty for the Straits of Malacca and Maritime Border Delimitation Treaty for Sulawesi Sea. For the land border delimitation, Malaysia are also ready to sign both a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, involving Pulau Sabate and Sinapat Sesai in the Sabah North Kalimantan sector via a 2020 24 package. He also stressed that both countries must adhere to the implementation of the Common Guidelines MOU to ensure the safety and welfare of fishermen in the disputed area of Straits of Malacca. The hot and dry weather trend that will exceed the 40 degrees Celsius in Thailand, China and Southern Asia, which are the main supplier of countries' agricultural products, may affect Malaysia's food chain supply. Minister of the Agricultural and Food Security, Datsu Sri Mohamed Sabu, however, said that the countries involved, including Malaysia, had forged cooperation with each other and prepared themselves to assist countries experiencing any agricultural products supply chain disruption. Uh, contingency plan ini sentiasa ada. Itu dibuat oleh pihak uh, kerajaan, termasuklah di bawah Perdana Menteri, di bawah Kementerian Ekonomi dan semua pihak yang yang terlibat. Sebab contingency plan ini kita kena buat. Sebab sekarang ini kita tahu bahawa misalnya bahang panas sekarang ini. Mungkin akan menjejaskan sedikit pengeluaran. Kita tak tahulah makanan di Thailand bagaimana. Kalau sampai 40 degree macam mana peladang nak pergi ke ladang mereka. Jadi kerjasi plan ini ada di setiap masa tapi kita di peringkat antarabangsa bincang secara serius hal hal keterjaminan makanan ini. Kalau negara ni kurang, negara ni akan cuba membantunya. Begitulah seterusnya yang kita lihat, yang kita sedia buat sekarang ini. He was met after officiating the Smart SBB Mini Sakinchan Mada Bernas program and visiting the Smart SBB site in Simpang Empat Perlis. The Smart SBB Mini Sakinchan Mada Bernas program was based on farming model implemented in Sakinchan Selangor that managed to increase the rice yield from 5 tons to 11 tons per hectare. The Health Ministry, MOH, will work closely with the Education Ministry as well as other relevant agencies to prepare ahead of the El Nino phenomenon and Southwest monsoon season. Its Minister, Dr. Zaleha Mustafa, said the Ministry's machinery preparedness is on the optimum scale to face any possibilities. 
Itu juga kalau uh, El Nino yang sekarang ni pun, pun kita tengok tentang perubahan haba yang 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 uh, ketara di negara kita. Jadi kita juga bersedia dan kita memang um, kalau ada mereka-mereka uh, uh, yang berdepan dengan masalah ataupun gejala-gejala yang berkaitan dengan uh, suhu uh, tinggi ini juga kita uh, men, uh, menggalakkan mereka datang ke hospital berjumpa doktor dan mendapat rawatan yang segera. Uh, walaupun um, uh, begitu kita juga melakukan uh, macam uh, edukasi eh, uh, kepada uh, rakyat dan kita bekerjasama juga dengan agensi-agensi lain termasuk KPM ya, untuk memastikan uh, kesejahteraan contohnya anak-anak di sekolah ya, uh, apakah cara-cara dan uh, untuk kita uh, uh, kata menjaga keadaan itu supaya kita tidak berdepan dengan uh, gejala yang lebih buruk daripada kesan-kesan tersebut. Okay, she was met at the Hari Raya Open House hosted by the Malaysian Organisation of Pharmaceutical Industries in Putrajaya yesterday. In another development, Dr Zaleha said the ministry would improve cooperation with pharmaceutical industry players in the country in various fields, including information sharing for the well-being of the rakyat. The empowerment of occupational safety and health must be taken seriously to protect the well-being of human capital in the country. Human Resources Minister V. Siva Kumar said the government continues to pay attention on the safety and health aspects of workforce. Yeah. Uh, kita kita uh, risau uh, kalau perkara ini tidak diberi uh, fokus maka um, um, maka uh, majikan uh, akan mengabaikan uh, perkara uh, keselamatan dan kesihatan pekerjaan. Walaupun sesuatu firma yang kecil, tetapi yang penting uh, untuk uh, majikan adalah untuk memastikan setiap pekerja mereka, mereka dilindungi dari segi keselamatan dan kesihatan mereka. The minister said this after launching the first ever Government Inc. Companies Occupational Safety and Health Summit in Bangi yesterday. Sivakuma said the number of occupational injuries recorded in the country in 2021 was 21,534 case, which was a 34% fall compared to the year earlier. He added that the fall in the rate of worker injuries was due to greater awareness by various interested parties on the importance of occupational safety and health. The unity government continues to be strengthened through the openness between component parties in line with Malaysia Madani concept. Now, each component parties must be united and working in tandem with the grassroots to convince the people to put their trust in the unity government. Ya, kita uh, mahu melihat bahawa kerajaan uh, yang ditubuh pada hari ini kukuh dan boleh terus uh, berkembang ke hadapan. Uh, justru itu sudah tentu sebagai uh, rakan uh, strategik dalam kerajaan kita juga nak melihat bahawa parti-parti uh, komponen yang membentuk kerajaan ini mencapai kejayaan masing-masing uh, umpamanya dalam pilihan raya negeri yang akan datang kita berharap UMNO akan mencapai kejayaan kerana kalau UMNO mencapai kejayaan maksudnya ini juga akan memberikan keyakinan kepada akar umbi mereka uh, bahawa uh, berada dalam kerajaan perpaduan pada hari ini memberikan manfaat kepada parti UMNO sendiri saya juga menekankan tentang kewujudan sekretariat kerajaan perpaduan yang mana isu-isu dan konflik antara parti itu boleh dibawa dalam sekretariat. Dan kemudian saya menekankan bahawa lebih banyak kebebasan diwujudkan dalam kerajaan perpaduan terutama sekali contohnya parlimen, speaker sendiri, Dewan Rakyat membawa banyak perubahan dan ini digalakkan oleh kerajaan Madani pada hari ini. Tak adanya penekanan, tak adanya himpitan, tak boleh, ini tak boleh, itu tak boleh. Kami lebih terbuka kerana kita nakkan supaya suara wakil rakyat, suara rakyat melalui wakil rakyat mereka didengar. Bukan saja di parlimen tapi juga di luar parlimen. Datuk Sri Azalina Utman and Anthony Luke spoke to RTM after attending the roundtable conference organised by the Coalition for Clean and Fair Elections, Bursay and Global Bursay in Parliament yesterday. Still to come, custom sees 4.7 million sticks of contraband cigarettes. Stay tuned.
The Turganu Customs Department, JKDM, crippled an attempt by a syndicate to smuggle cigarettes worth over 500,000 ringgit, an unpaid duty amounting to 3.2 million ringgit in situ last Saturday. Customs also seized two lorries, a boat and two 250 horsepower engines in the raid, all worth 260,000 ringgit. Following information from members of the public and surveillance carried out by customs officers, a team from the department carried out the raid at 1.30 p.m. in Kampung Pengkalan, Gelap. State JKDM Director Mohamed Nazri Arifin said the syndicate smuggled the cigarettes by boat before transferring it onto lorries for distribution in the East Coast and Klang Valley regions. However, upon realizing the presence of the enforcement team, about eight members of the syndicate managed to escape into the nearby mangrove forest. Sebab pantai kat situ paya dan laluan-laluan air kat situ banyak. So itu memudahkan pihak mereka untuk bertindak. Dan uh, kita tidak leka lah untuk memastikan kawasan-kawasan yang memudahkan mereka ni kita pantau dengan uh, rapi lah. That's uh, hasil pada 6 Mei yang kita ada sekarang lah. Maksudnya kita tidak leka lah. Eh. Kita, kita still mematuhi... Uh, peraturan kita untuk melakukan kekangan ke atas penyelurupan-penyelurupan ini. The heirs of Sulu Sultanate are welcome to bring forward their claims upon Sabah to the International Court of Justice, ICJ, if they have the presupposed evidence. Minister and Prime Minister's Department for Laws and Institutional Reforms, Datu Sri Azalina Otman Said, said ICJ is the right platform for them to challenge Malaysia instead of seizing assets belong to the country and challenging its sovereignty. Why are you not going to the ICJ? Challenges in the ICJ. If you claim that you have entitlement, you have proof, you have mapping, you have documents, challenges that way. We will fight you to the end. She added the government will continue to protect Malaysia's sovereignty and take the appropriate legal actions to safeguard the country's interests. Recently, the Sulu Airs failed to subjugate three Malaysia real estate properties in Paris following their failure to capture another asset in Luxembourg. Government will come up with a standard operating procedure to combat illegal mining activities. Science, Technology and Innovation Minister Chang Le Kang said there is also a need to improve enforcement aspect to protect the country's mineral source. Memang kerajaan memandang, memandang uh, beratlah tentang uh, isu ini dan uh, kita akan pertingkatkan uh, penguatkuasaan. Uh, pada masa yang sama, kita juga akan keluarkan satu SOP tentang perlombongan, uh, terutamanya uh, tentang perlombongan uh, uh, apa tu, lombong kritikal lah, seperti RAF. He was met at the National Mineral Council meeting in Puchong yesterday. The meeting had identified 60 illegal mines across the country, with most of them are located in Kedah. Further discussion of the matter will be based on input by the Ministry of Natural Resources, Environment and Climate Change. Protests erupt as former Pakistan Prime Minister arrested. There are more coming up in the foreign segment. But first, after nearly two decades in exile, billionaire Taksin Shinawatra remains one of the most influential figures in Thai politics, but Sunday's election could be his family's last chance to retake power. Now, the clan's party, Peo Thai, fronted by his daughter, Pei Tong Tan, is leading in the polls, thanks in large part to its deep reservoir of support among the rural poor. Its long-standing anti-military credentials and tactics of deploying a family member as a figurehead. 
However, in Thai politics, securing the most seats is no guarantee of victory. Ajanta rewrote the constitution in 2017 to give the military a huge advantage in future elections. And Thaksin has had to watch from afar as other parties with more radical pro-democracy platforms have eaten into poor Thai support. Thaksin tweeted Tuesday that he plans to return to Thailand by his 26th July birthday, saying he is ready to face justice in numerous corruption cases against him. For rather than the courts or military, political analysts said, the skyrocketing popularity of the progressive move forward Forward Party, MFP, which has gained support from the youth who led pro-democracy protests three years ago, posed the bigger, longer-term challenge. The road to Heraklion is smooth and freshly laid, with a sign proclaiming it part of an Indian government development initiative, but ethnic violence has reduced the village itself to little more than smouldering ashes. More than 50 people have been killed in the hilly border region in clashes between the majority Meite people, who are mostly Hindus, and the mainly Christian Kuki tribe. Thousands of troops have been deployed to restore order, while around 23,000 residents have fled their homes for the safety of ad hoc army-run camps for the displaced. The far-flung states of Northeast India, sandwiched between Bangladesh, China and Myanmar, have long been a tinderbox of tensions between different ethnic groups. The spark for the latest ethnic clash was a protest about plans to give the Meite Scheduled Tribe status. A form of affirmative action to combat structural inequality and discrimination, that classification would give them guaranteed quotas of government jobs and college admissions. Violence erupted in the regional capital info and elsewhere with protesters setting fire to vehicles and buildings according to villagers made a mobs armed with guns and petrol cans then attacked cookie settlements in the hills authorities are concerned there could be more reprisal attacks as both communities have now accumulated weapons Protests erupted across Pakistan yesterday after former Prime Minister Imran Khan was arrested during a court appearance in the capital for one of dozens of cases pending since he was ousted last year. His arrest follows months of political crisis and came hours after the powerful military rebuked the former international cricketer for alleging that a senior officer had been involved in a plot to kill him. Some protesters took out their wrath on the military, storming the residence of the corps commander in Lahore and laying siege to a gate of the army's general's headquarters in the garrison city of Rawalpindi. Police fired tear gas and water cannon to disperse Khan supporters in Karachi and Lahore, while protesters blocked roads in the capital Islamabad, Peshawar and other cities. Khan faces dozens of charges since being ousted. A tactic analysts say successive Pakistan governments have used to silence their opponents. He could be barred from holding public office if convicted, which would exclude him from elections scheduled for later this year. A high-stakes meeting between President Joe Biden and key lawmakers from both parties on Tuesday yielded no breakthrough on the impasse over the U.S. debt limit, but the group agreed to keep trying to avert a devastating default. Now, Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell, the Senate Minority Leader, met with Biden and top Democratic leaders at the White House in the latest round of a power struggle threatening massive consequences for the world's largest economy. McCarthy said despite not seeing any new movement, he, McConnell, as well as Democratic Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, House Minority Leader Hakim Jeffries and Biden would meet again on Friday. The lifting of the so-called debt ceiling, a limit on government borrowing to pay for bills already incurred, is often routine. But budget-minded Republicans who won control of the House of Representatives in 2022 midterm elections have vowed to only raise the limit from its current $31.4 trillion maximum if spending curbs are enacted. Schumer added that by not taking the fault off the table, McCarthy was, quote, greatly endangering America. A similar impasse in 2011 resulted in the United States losing the coveted AAA debt rating. Biden has warned of dire consequences this time too. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has said that unless Congress acts in the coming weeks, financial and economic chaos would ensue. 
Yellen has also had conversations with CEOs to discuss the dangers of brinkmanship. Ecuador's opposition-controlled parliament yesterday voted to hold an impeachment trial for President Guillermo Lasso on embezzlement charges in his second attempt to oust him in a year. The move comes after online newspaper La Posta published allegations in January of widespread graft in public companies involving Lasso's brother-in-law, Danilo Carrera. Opposition MPs have accused the Conservative president of being aware of the alleged corruption in which a drug trafficking accused businessman close to Carrera has also been implicated. Lasso has argued that the allegation date too before he became president in May 2021. In March, the Constitutional Court authorized the unicameral National Assembly to hold impeachment proceedings against Lasso for alleged embezzlement. With 116 of the 137 member assembly present, 88 voted Tuesday in favor of an impeachment hearing. The chamber would need a two-thirds majority or 92 members to successfully impeach the president. Another impeachment attempt in June last year failed to garner enough votes. And next in sports, Man City keeps Champions League final hope alive. Stay with us. But first, the Badminton Association of Malaysia, BAM, has confirmed that Michelle Chai has tendered her resignation as the Academy of Badminton Malaysia, ABM, Chief Executive Officer, CEO. Now, BAM in a statement said that Chai's action is related to the lackluster performance of the National Women's Squad, which was eliminated from the Cambodia Sea Games in Phnom Penh on Monday. ABM also announced that Dr. Timothy John Jones, the ABM High Performance Director, has been relieved of his duties with immediate effect. BAM's actions was made less than 24 hours after the press conference held by Chai yesterday morning, where she admitted to being responsible for the lackluster performance shown by the women's team, apart from hinting at resigning from a position. Chai at the press conference said, the shocking 3-0 defeat to the Philippines in the quarterfinal action at the Morodo Techno Badminton Halt National Stadium was unacceptable and required a solution from ABM's management and coaching team. And in football, Kevin De Bruyne's brilliant drive at Manchester City a one-all draw at Real Madrid in a gripping Champions League semi-final first leg battle early this morning. Now, the Belgian slammed Pep Guardiola's visitors level after Vinicius Jr. opened the scoring for the reigning champions from distance in similarly spectacular fashion. Madrid managed to completely shackle lethal striker Erling Haaland, but De Bruyne's powerful effort left the tie on a knife edge ahead of the second leg in Manchester next week. The record 14-time winners knocked City out at the same stage last season despite being outplayed in both games and took the lead at the Santiago Bernabeu against the run of play. However, when Madrid found their stride in the second half, City, still chasing their first ever Champions League trophy, hit back through De Bruyne. And Inter Milan must think on their feet and be adaptable against rivals. AC Milan manager Simone Inzaghi said ahead of his side's bid to overturn a losing Champions League record against their familiar foes. Italian rivals Inter and Milan, who have won a combined 10 Champions League titles, have faced each other on two occasions in the knockout stages, with Milan emerging victorious in both previous ties, played in 2003 and 2005. However, Inter have been more successful in recent meetings, winning three and drawing two of the seven derbies the teams have played since Inzaghi took over as Inter manager in 2021. Those wins have included 3-0 victories in the Italian Super Cup final earlier this year and last year's Coppa Italia semi-final. Beh, eh, chiaramente le ultime la qualificazione alla semifinali e di Champions, alla finale di Coppa Italia, gli ultimi risultati in, in campionato chiaramente mm, ci hanno fatto preparare al meglio tutte le partite, poi domani sappiamo che è una semifinale di Champions, è un derby, anzi il derby sappiamo tutti, non ci nascondiamo 
l'importanza che ha per noi, per la nostra società, per i nostri tifosi e lo vogliamo affrontare nel migliore dei modi. Inter's last meeting with Milan, the Champions League semifinals, came 20 years ago in the 2002-2003 season, when Milan beat them en route to a sixth European title. Meanwhile, AC Milan will make a late call on Rafael Leao's participation in their Champions League semi-final first leg against arch-rivals Inter Milan. Manager Stefano Pioli said on Tuesday after the Portuguese winger suffered a muscle injury. Now, Leao has been one of Milan's most influential players this season with 13 goals and 10 assists in all competitions. But he lasted only 12 minutes on Saturday's 2-0 win over Lazio before being taken off. Pioli said Lea would either start the game or not play at all, adding that Belgian winger Alexis Hillmakers was a potential replacement for early tomorrow morning match at the San Siro. Eh, st stiamo parlando di Champions, in Champions la squadra non, non ha fatto alti e bassi, ha fatto un percorso eccezionale. Vogliamo provare a superare anche questo ultimo step prima di conquistare una finale di Champions, cosa che a tutti noi credo non sia mai successo. Quindi le motivazioni, la volontà, la determinazione, l'ambizione sarà è al massimo, questo assolutamente. Milan, who were dethroned as Serie A champions last week by Napoli, have had a rough run in the league with only three wins in their last ten games, slipping into fifth, two points behind fourth place, Inter. However, Pioli is choosing to focus on their European run, during which they knocked out Tottenham Hotspur in the last 16 and Napoli in the quarterfinals. Lionel Messi has not signed or agreed a deal to play in Saudi Arabia next season. The Argentine's father said after reports on Tuesday link the Paris Saint-Germain forward with the move to the West Asia. Now, Messi's future at PSG has been the subject of much speculation in recent days after the Liga A side suspended him for making a trip to Saudi Arabia and missing a training session as a result. On Tuesday, French media reported that Messi's move to Saudi Arabia was a done deal, adding that the 35-year-old was in the process of finalizing details before signing a contract. However, Messi's father, Jorge, said in a statement on Instagram that there is absolutely nothing going on with any club for next year and the decision will never be made before Messi finishes the season with PSG. Messi, who apologized to PSG and his teammates last week, returned to training on Monday. A source close to Argentina's captain told Reuters that he had received a formal offer to join the Saudi Arabian club Al-Hilal next season with the contract renewal at PSG not on the cards for the World Cup winner who turns 36 next month. The all-rich nation appointed Messi, its tourism ambassador last year, and he visited Jeddah in May 2022. He returned in January to play a friendly match with PSG against a team of Saudi league stars when he faced his great rival Cristiano Ronaldo. And that ends updates at noon, wrapping up with a recap of our top story, PM underlines five agendas during meeting with President Djokovic. Tune in to Belize tonight, coming up at 8.30pm on Saloran Barita RTM. Until then, I'm Brendan Lepal, stay tuned to TV2 and Salam Malaysia Madani.